Okay, so the battery in this particular model of X1 is actually in the boot, not in the under the bonnet as it is with some of the other models. I'll put the exact models this relates to in the description. And the boot liner, there's a little finger finger hole there. You're not wearing a really thick gloves like I am. It's about three degrees here in the UK at the Colmans. So we're just going to remove this cross member here, uh, take off the um, little hose here which takes the, the waste gas away. So remove these two nuts, we're going to take the battery out. But the really important thing is once you've replaced the battery is to tell the car it's got a new battery because it charges at different rates. So an older battery like this, it'll be charging at quite a high rate, a new battery will be charging at a much lower rate because um, it doesn't want to uh, risk damaging the cell. So it's got a whole algorithm that it uses. So do make sure that you uh, get ISTA, and okay well if you don't know what those are don't worry i'll show you at the end of the video how to get all that set up um uh, if you do know what those are then you'll probably know what you're doing you can skip that bit and there's chapters marked in the video description okay so let's get cracking okay so this nut is about a 10 mil nut and just be conscious of that cable okay so you don't really need to remove this cable guy here but if you do want to use a silicone or a, a similar pry tool you know like the ones you use for removing body panel parts i'll put a link in the in the description for that but it does come it's just got to gently move it out and it's fine so it um, goes like like that okay so now we just got it we always remove the negative terminal first because that way uh, if something catches it, because the earth, the body is earth, if something catches it or something drops, much less likely to cause a hazard. Whereas if you take the positive terminal away first, something catches the positive terminal can cause a hazard much easier. So uh, negative terminal first always. Good simple, right? And that way if you catch the body with your, with your ratchet, it's not going to cause a hazard because that's negative, this is negative, it's all good. Take the other way around and you've got a problem. So, And believe me, if you shot one of these batteries out with a bit of metal like that, You've got a serious, serious arc flash explosion risk, so you do not want that. So that comes off, and um, this battery is very, very low, so no sparks. You might see one of the sparks as you bring it off, just as the, as the connection is broken. Don't worry about it. Okay, so the two positive terminals to remove, there's a little diagram just showing you that as well. So we're going to remove this positive terminal here, and we're going to remove this positive terminal here. And by the look of it, we've got to disconnect the module from, uh, from there as well. So this one here, it's quite easy. Just pull that back, right? It's just a little plastic lug there. Quite simple. And again, another 10 mil bolt to remove there. And that's actually not on very tight at all. That's good, that's off. Well, at least it's, it's loose. Uh, now we've got this one to remove. Yeah, you just remove that. 13 mil, that one. So this kind of connector pack on the top of the battery, it's actually held in by this clip here, which has got a couple of kind of clamp fittings on the side, slightly further down. So what I do is get a couple of lower flat bladed screwdrivers, put them in and just pull them away so the whole thing comes away. Okay. That's it. Great, now it's just a case of just removing this, this tube over here, that's for the waste hydrogen. So then just remove the clamp down the right hand side there, and then we're good to go. That should be a 10 mil socket now. We will need an extension on your on your socket to do that. Probably a long extension. Okay, so now with that clamp removed and with the hose removed from this side and the connector pack removed and the negative removed, of course, you can now pull it out. Okay, so as you'd expect, we've done this properly. 
Um, so we've got the new battery here. It's 115 uh, amp hour cranking out, which is the replacement. And uh, I've been charging it for a couple of days now on the, the Optimate. This is an Optimate 7, meaning it's highest charging rates uh, up to 10 amps. So it can do a decent charge. Uh, and it will check to make sure that it's safe to do that as well. And it will uh, repair damaged batteries and so forth. So it's a really fantastic charger. Um, also great for motorcycle batteries as well and, and smaller batteries as well. Um, so yeah, this has been charging. Uh, so let's get it in the car and get it switched over. Okay, so before you put the new battery in, do be sure to remove the little elbow that you get on your old battery because it needs to go into that little uh, uh, waste escape hole just there for the waste gases. So you will need a screwdriver just to remove that. That's actually there so that during storage they don't get a huge build up of gas, transport and so forth. not the easiest bung to remove but there it is removed with a metal trim removal so the waste gas always just goes in there that's all ready to go okay so now the battery can go back in the new one in as they say in the manual refitting is a reversal of removal but there's a catch so please do watch the end. Uh, I'll speed the refitting up to save your viewing time. Okay, so as we disconnected the negative first, before we're going to put that on last, same logic as before. Okay, so now the uh, little hose can go on. Let's take the waste hydrogen away. Should the battery make any of it? But you pack these to come back on there. Yeah, so your new battery may not, the clip may not engage as it did with the, the old one. I'm not using an official BMW battery, so that may be collateral of doing that. It's not the end of the world, honestly. Okay, so this one's a 13 mil. And this one, other one was a 10 mil. Okay, so now the positive's on, we've got the, the tube on, <clears throat> got the clamp on, now we can put the negative on only now. Now what you will find as you do this, there will be uh, probably be some sparks as you put it on and that's just because it's connecting for the first time, it's, it's the energy trying to jump that gap. Um, just have confidence, push down, it'll be fine. Very little there actually, very little power going through it. Uh, and now again, I want to do, I'm going to do this one by hand. Okay, so now the uh, restraining bar can go over the top. Remember to put the cable restraint back in, in, the, in the metal. Right. Go across and So coming up now is how to register this battery with the car so it charges at the appropriate rate and doesn't shorten the life of the battery. But I did, I did promise you uh, an extra tip now. I strongly recommend you carry one of these in your boot, okay? Uh, this will really be there when you need it. This is a jump start pack. 
So it's a uh, jump lead and basically a huge lithium ion battery. You plug the jump leads in at this end here uh, and it will give you a quick jump start should you need it. Uh, it's also got a torch and uh, US emergency USB charging and so forth. So uh, really, really worthwhile having one of these in your boot and obviously you need to keep it charged every so often uh, when you'll charge from uh, any mini or USB-C type charger. So you could even have it on permanent charge in the boot if you wanted. Uh, but yeah, highly recommend carrying one of these. Okay, let's get the battery registered with the car. Okay, so now that we've got the battery installed in, uh, in the X1, we're now going to tell the car that it's got a new battery. The reason why we do this is that the car will charge the battery according to how old it is. So the older it is, the more charge it will put into it. Uh, so therefore, if you put a new battery on it, it's going to overcharge it. So you don't want that. So quite apart from keeping accurate records in the vehicle, everything's stored in the computer, um, it's important to do this. Now I've got, I'm connecting up to this E84 X1, it's a 2014 one, this particular model, with a, uh, a KD CAN cable. Uh, and using uh, ISTA Plus to do it. You can use Bluetooth um, connections for your OBD port uh, and you can use Bimmer Tools app on your iPhone or iPad which is another way, nice way of doing it um, but I prefer to use BMW Zone System it just gives you that much more uh, feels like it's that much more flexibility in, in main. your mileage may vary but when you log into ISTA you go to Operations we have Vehicle Data as you're probably used to doing and uh, Complete Identification and it will turn away for a while, it will talk to the computer, and uh, in time it will read the VIN and it will read the exact configuration of the vehicle, exactly what options are fitted, what's not fitted, uh, and then it will give you access to actually make adjustments to the vehicle. It takes about a minute or two. Okay, there we go. So it's taken a little while, but once you get to this, uh, this kind of connection tree of all the different computers in the car, all the different ECUs, Green is good, obviously yellow means you've got some faults, so the diesel um, uh, controller has got, uh, has got some faults there. Uh, but we're not going to be interested in that right now. What we're going to do is actually tell the car it's got a new battery. So we need to go to vehicle management, and then service functions, and then bizarrely it's on the body, and then you want to go down to voltage supply, and then register battery replacement so you want to go to AVL to register the batteries so test plan would mean that there's a whole bunch of stuff you're doing uh, and you'd want it to be part of that we're just going to go straight and do it and it comes up with these these two options here display history register exchange and service option so it's it's good practice to display the history so we'll have a look and then continue So it's currently got an 80 amp hour OGM um, and that's the same battery that has been installed from new. This is 2014 and now in 2023. So that is done nine years on one battery. That's not bad going at all. So we're going to return to the selection uh, and this time we're going to say, okay, I want to tell you that I've changed the battery. And it's important you tell it the right capacity. So I'm just going to double check. Okay, I'm just going to pause the recording for a second. Okay, yeah, so we did it. We have installed the same battery again. It's an 80 amp hour AGM battery. Um, but obviously, you can change that if you've put in a larger or smaller battery. Um, or if you put in a, a different type of battery. So this is a stop, start, stop car, meaning um, when you stop the vehicle, get come to the set of traffic lights, whatever, it will start to stop the engine. That needs an AGM type battery, which is much more resilient than a regular lead acid battery. Um, so we're just going to go there. It's exactly the same. Okay, same capacity. Go for it. Is it an original BMW part? No, it is not. Okay. So now it's it's now registered that it's had the first battery change at. Uh, 108,000 kilometers at 67,000 miles. That's done really well, that first battery. 
um, and uh, we are now done. So just press continue. And then the date and time of the vehicle need to be set. So yeah, I, I have already changed the date and time of the vehicle, but uh, it's a nice touch from BMW to get you to just check that. Um, so it is indeed the 17th of April and it is indeed 1827. Press continue and you are done. Hope that helps. Please do consider subscribing. I will be adding a lot more videos on the X1 in the future.